And the winning has just finally been sighted in 10.2.5 and they seem to be hiding this fact from Terrellian, the Lightforge King. And guys, I think we got it so wrong this entire time. And he hasn't lost the light because he did bad things with the Jailer and because he doused himself, but because he realized that the light had used him as a pawn this entire time. When he was serving the Jailer, he saw how the cosmology really works and that the light is yet another predatory force that just wants to conquer Azeroth for themselves. This is why he only confided with Sylvanas, the only person that saw the exact same thing with her own eyes that Azeroth is a prison and why he needed alone time. Notice how in the cinematic Anduin has a mental breakdown when Troll tells him that the world needs his light and he says he isn't that person anymore, not after what he had seen. Also, notice the official artwork that shows his sword that it is empty, it no longer has the light orb in the middle. Does it finally make sense why he doesn't just send an alliance expedition to Silithus and come with the alliance force and take over the throne, but instead he is hiding from the Lightforge King of the Army of the Light. Did you know you can play WoW on your phone? You can check in on your characters, you can play the game, you can even do minor things you don't really want to do on the PC. With this video sponsor, Awesome, allowing you to control your PC with your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS, and Android. Awesome is incredibly easy to use. Check out my link in the description, download the PC and the phone version, and just connect it. The free version itself is amazing as you can control your desktop, transfer files, but the real deal is the game version. It has custom keyboards for various games other than just WoW and you can enjoy AFK gaming at any time, anywhere with game sound. Make sure to use my code Doron to get 7 days completely free only for the first 200 people. They also got a smart plug to turn off your PC at any time as well as hot sales with up to 40% off on pro and game versions. Check out awesome. I admit I was thinking this way too because Anduin had committed terrible things when under the influence of the Jailer he no longer had the light so it was like a moral issue and PTSD that so many people had attributed to him but with the new info from 10.2.5 this really starts to change. We didn't get any new crazy character or reveal but we got two incredibly interesting lightkins that I really feel like add a lot more context to this entire matter. First is that Gen had finally cited Anduin that he is a Around Ratchet, he was gathering supplies and obviously he's traveling south and he purposefully didn't want to inform the king that he's supposed to report to, obviously knowing something that we don't. Second is that we got some super interesting developments with the Scarlet Crusade where those crazy light wielders started turning into light monstrosities and proclaiming that the light will purge our stain from the world. When we combine this with the Caldeum and the recent Rallyan stuff, it all starts to make quite a bit more sense. Let me give you more context and then you can try analyzing the cinematic yourself and the other info and you will start seeing everything in a different light. So Anduin has been a priest since forever like from a really really young age and seeing that he was obviously a prince he got guidance from the best light wielders from very powerful priests to even mythological figures such as Welland that is like 25,000 years old but this little bit here is very important. He was put into this from a young age it's not like he was a full grown adult that chose the light and now now that he's actually a full grown adult and he got a first row seat to the cosmological battle and the truth through the jailer, he realized just how stupid he was. Let me elaborate. Anduin's light journey has been really well developed in the lore and I mean really well developed especially if you read the book stating all the way back to Cataclysm. He was said to have incredible talent for the light and this really started forming his identity. Keep in mind, Anduin had a really tragic childhood, his mother died, his father was kidnapped, he was burdened from a really young age so this light this insane power he had inside him this talent that no one else had had really given him purpose in life we have multiple occasions when he said he wanted to dedicate his life to the light and its powers and he obviously did so for quite a while we had personally observed this development just how crazy overpowered Anduin had gotten over the years he resurrected people on multiple occasions and keep in mind while every other guy can really do this in the game in the lore resurrection is incredibly rare he did something akin to like a master resurrection in the bfa cinematic and most importantly he had personally resurrected kelly and Manitil through the guidance of a very powerful naru and we will get to this in a bit because i think this bit here is key overall though every single hard time he had the light helped him it was with him he had nothing but hard times in his life so light was always there for him however now all of that would turn upside down 
I recently made a video on why we shouldn't trust Relian and Kelia, but let me really quickly sum this up. These two figures all but control the entirety of the Eastern Kingdoms, and they're not priests, they're not paladins, they were personally lightforged by a powerful Naru, like they changed their DNA to the core. Trillian was said to have long past mortality, and Kalia is the first ever light undead. Both of them are essentially naturally dead, and the only thing that is keeping them alive is the light. Now, I want you to keep very close attention to this little detail. The light seems to have something akin to a talent to see the future, that is why Velen is the prophet, like why they call him the prophet, like they can predict what will happen in the future. Why is it that so many insanely powerful light figures just die, such as Tyrion, Uther, Draenei Commander, Silverhand, and none of them were personally resurrected, the Naru never really intervened personally, however, in the case of Kalia, they decided to come down from the sky and handpick her, and also Tyrellian. Is it possible that the light had predicted that these two figures would eventually get lead role on Azeroth and therefore they could get their own pawns they could later use in a light invasion. I know you may be thinking there are no serious indications that they're evil, but there were no indications Yrel was evil back in Worlds of Draenor and she just conquered and enslaved the entire planet in the name of the light. I believe it is possible to turn their minds on a switch, seeing that they're really light beings at their core. So after the start of the Nagel fight in 10.2.5 we just got a report that Anduin was finally sighted, as previously there were only rumors and guess Guess what? Gen doesn't want the Lightforge King Terellian to know, and I think this is for a reason. Now, where does Anduin come in here? Well, first of all, he is not Lightforged, he is just a priest or a paladin, or really something in between, but he is a regular human that just wields the light. Well, guess what? The Jailer. An ancient being that has super rare knowledge of how the universe really works, decided to kidnap him out of all the other people on Azeroth, which now I think was for a reason, and he enslaves him. Now, keep one thing in mind here. Sylvanas was with him this entire time, and we know she got the red pill as well as she realized that this world is a prison, she understood the mechanism and everything that no one else does. Well, Anduin gets mind control, and he essentially gets a front row seat to how all this works, and my best guess here is that through this perspective, he realized that the light isn't this noble force at all, it is literally just one cosmological force that wants their piece of the pie and is all over Azeroth, just in a more undercover way. He also realizes that he has been doing their bidding just like he has done the Jailer's bidding, like the way he resurrected Kalia. The only difference is that Zowal mind controlled him outright, the light has been doing it in a more sophisticated and more subtle way. I would say this light mind control is even more sinister and malicious as you're never actually aware you are being mind controlled. Now check out these crucial details and you will see why this makes sense. After Anduri has been freed, did you notice two very important things? One is that he wanted to be alone and second is that he visited Sylvanas. Did you notice that he didn't at all want to confide in his trusted mentor Velen that he has like 25,000 years of cosmological intelligence, knows the nooks and the crannies of the cosmos, or Gan, or anyone else, and that is because what he had seen. He knows none of them can understand it unless they see it with their own eyes. The only person that can understand him is Sylvanas because she had seen the exact same thing with her eyes. So after confiding in her, he had to figure out what to do. Now that leads us to the void within cinematic. We see Anduin as this broken figure and we all believe it is just PTSD talking and he's extra sad because he was a lackey of the jailer. But you all know he didn't really do anything that terrible that would haunt him and destroy his mind forever. Now check out this super interesting detail as well. Did you notice that he's decently calm when Troll arrives, but there is one thing that causes this huge mental breakdown. Troll says, the world needs your light again, and Anduin just loses his mind. He knows that he can't explain it through to Troll, he's also powerless without the light, as that is what made him a superhero in the past, and he now has big threats ahead of him, like this is just sheer helplessness talking. Then analyze what he says, I'm not that person anymore, I have no light, not after what I had seen what I had done. Keep in mind the order of the word he says. 
first he says what I had seen, then he says what I had done. Now, he arrived here because Azeroth is calling him just as it is calling a lot of the other denizens of this planet. That is because in this grand cosmological battle where everyone wants their way, the Light, the Legion, the Jailer, the Void, the only force we should truly be loyal to is Azeroth. And then probably realize that the real force he should believe in is life because he is a being of the life force and that everyone else is trying to manipulate him to betray his natural affiliation. Now check out yet another super interesting detail. Previously, I could believe this as well that Anduin just needs to deal with the issues so that he can start using the line again. But did you notice the artwork of him, like the official artwork for the war within, which seems to be based like mid expansion? In particular, zoom in on his sword and you will see there is no light. There is no light orb that was there in the past. Because of that, I think Anduin's days as a priest or a paladin are done and he had essentially broken the brainwashing and realized he needs to be loyal to life. Now, as I had previously stated, I do believe there are two factions with the light, the evil, and the good side, and that Anduin may continue to use the light in a way, but think of something as a warlock as opposed to a demon. I mean, a warlock wields the fell, manipulates it to do his bidding, but he isn't loyal to the Twisting Nether or this or the realm, neither is he a demon. I think a similar approach can be taken with the light as well, and that Anduin may figure it out later down the line. This is why I think Chris Metzen said we will banish the void together with the light, not the imperialist evil light that we will soon see but the more benevolent force that will actually be helping us thank you for watching check out the return of the burning legion by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in spain by clicking on the screen as well see you next time